Hi everyone, Adam from Audience here, and today we're going to be looking at getting you started with your ID interface and with Bitwig Studio. First things first, we're going to need to plug in our ID interface and get the drivers installed. Today I'm using a Mac, but on Windows PCs, the process is practically identical. First things first, I've got an ID14 here today, but the process is the same for an ID4, ID24, and ID44. We take our USB-C cable. If you have a computer that only has USB-A ports, that should work absolutely fine. You can get USB-A to USB-C cables and plug that into your interface. And the interface will turn on. In the case of the ID44, you will also need to plug that in to external power. On my screen, it's asking me if I should allow this accessory to connect. Of course, that's what we want. And now not much else will happen because we need to install the drivers. I'm going to open up my browser, which in this case is Chrome, and go to audient.com. Here we can go to the product page and find our product. In my case, here the ID14. And on this page is a button that says Downloads. Just down the page, there is the Mac driver or the Windows driver. Download whichever one you need. And in my case, I have to drag and drop the ID onto applications. On Windows, you would double click on the installer and then run through the steps as necessary as it guides you. Now on Mac, I do have to open my applications and open that ID app one time. And then that will ask me, that's downloaded from the internet, are you sure? Yes. It would like to access the microphone, which in this case is the ID14's microphones. We can check for updates automatically. And there's the Arc Creative Hub, which in this case, I'm already a member. But if you'd like to join Arc, then you get lots of opportunities for wonderful free plugins, free software, discounts, all sorts of great offers. Check that out. I'm going to click already a member. And then close that down. Now, you'll be able to see at the top right corner, the ID icon, which tells me that the ID mixer is installed and the ID drivers are active. Now, if I click this and go to show mixer, that will show me everything about the ID 14 in real time. Same with the 24 and 44. The ID 4 has a slightly different setup. There is no mixer with the drivers, but the ID 4 is so relatively simple that it's a slightly different kind of thing. And that will still come up in Bitwig Studio absolutely fine. Next, I'm going to plug in a microphone and make sure that's all working perfectly well. In my case, I have a studio condenser microphone here and I'm going to plug this in to the ID14 on channel one. On the ID series of interfaces, we do need to engage phantom power for condensers on a switch on the front of the interface. So I'm going to turn on 48 volts now. And then once that's settled, I'm going to turn up the gain, which is the, the knob on the front, until I'm getting a reasonable level that you can see on the screen there. Now I know that's ready for when we open our door. Now we have our interface plugged in. Now we have our drivers ready. It's time to open Bitwig Studio. If yours is a trial version or you have a license, now is the time you would input that. I've already put in my license data and now it's come up with a few things on the top right of Bitwig Studio. It says install essentials, everything, or the package manager, which is to choose what parts of Bitwig to install. And I'm going to click install essentials and that will work in the background. But the most important thing for us now is there's no audio device selected and we need to go to show audio settings to get things working. Now having clicked audio settings, the driver model is core audio. That's standard on Mac OS. On Windows, the one that is highly recommended is ACO. ACO has a very low latency, so a very tiny delay, which should be imperceptible compared to the other options that are available to you. And we want to make sure that our input device and output device are both the audience ID interface that you've plugged in 
as so. Now the sample rates here, it says it's automatic. You can choose whichever one is appropriate for your production. Usually, traditionally, 44,100 hertz, 44.1K as we call it, is the standard that CD production would use. Whereas 48,000 is the standard that DVD production, film production, anything to do with what's going out with video would be using. Then there are higher options, 88.2 and 96. Those are a little more esoteric, but if you need those, usually you'll know. So I'm going to select 48,000 there. And then block size is currently on auto, but I can change the latency. So how quickly the audio goes from this microphone or any other source like a, a MIDI keyboard or anything that's making the sounds through Bitwig Studio, through the audience ID interface and back out through your headphones or monitors. Now we can choose input buses here so we can add different ways that Bitwig can access the different inputs. In this case, the ID14 has 12 possible input buses here, which includes the digital optical inputs, which we're not using right now. We're going to use the simple analog inputs. So where there's stereo in, that might be used if you had say a stereo synthesizer plugged in. We're going to add two mono buses. So I'm going to have mono in one and mono in two to be inputs one and two off the ID14 respectively so that if I want to record just this microphone, which is plugged into input one, I can select a mono bus in Bitwig for input one. The output buses, we have output one and two, which is the two jacks on the back, or by default through the mixer is also the headphone mix, is defined as output buses, and it says it's speakers. I'm going to change that to headphones, but you can leave that as speakers if you're using monitor speakers. And we could, if we choose, have completely different mixes for headphones and speakers. In that case, you would have to make sure that you're using the ID mixer with the door through mode, which if we show the system panel here, is if we look at stereo one and two, stereo three and four, they are set to the main mix and alternate speakers, which is also the main mix. And then the headphones are also currently set to hear the main mix, which would be one and two. But if we change that to door through mode, that will warn us that that could be loud. We hit okay. And the headphone output then is defined as five and six, as we can see here from the output numbers five and six. If we go back to Bitwig Studio now, we can now define the speakers as speakers and we could hit add headphones and make sure the headphones are five and six. And now Bitwig knows that our speakers would come out on the one and two TRS jacks and that our headphones come out on five and six. You don't have to do it this way, but it's a way that Bitwig Studio is designed to be able to be used. Now, if we close down this page, this opens up the main Bitwig Studio and we can click activate audio engine at the top left. Once that's activated, Bitwig Studio is now live. And so we can see our microphone. We can see that things are ready to record here. So if we want to record a microphone now in Bitwig Studio, we can see on our default example here, there is an audio channel, audio two. And what we have to do is set that up. If we look at the bottom left, it says there is no input. So where it says no input, we click on that and we can see now some levels coming in. The stereo in, which would only have this microphone on the left side because of left and right. And below that is the mono in that we defined in the settings. So if I click mono in and now hit record on the audio two channel, we can unrecord the instrument, but we can see now that the levels are going up and down on audio two. Now, whether we can hear that or not very much depends on input monitoring. Now, if we want to record some audio, we hit the record at the very top and then we hit play. So record, then play, because record arms the tracks ready to be recorded on and then play means that you can now see the audio coming in on those two bars. If I hit stop by hitting spacebar, we can now see on the screen here that our audio was recorded in. 
If I make that a little bigger, you can see the waveform audio. Now, if you are getting the kind of problem where you can hear your vocals twice, that is a monitoring issue. If we look at the ID mixer, we can see levels coming in from this microphone, but if I pull up this fader, that will give you the near zero latency monitoring through the ID device itself. So that's going straight from the microphone out to the speakers or the monitors. This is great for having almost no latency, but the trade-off is that there will be no effects processing at all. That sound is going straight through from the microphone, straight to your output device. If we turn this fader all the way down, we then won't hear it through the ID mixer, and then we have to listen through Bitwig Studio, which will incur a small, tiny amount of latency or delay, but the trade-off here is that we are able to use Bitwig Studio's inbuilt effects. Whether you want to use distortion, delay, any other kind of processing that you see fit, you will be able to hear that through Bitwig Studio by doing it this way. If you want to add audio effects onto your vocal in Bitwig Studio, you can see them all on the right hand side here. So I could drag and drop something like distortion onto audio two, and suddenly that distortion appears in the chain here. But like I said, we'll only hear that through Bitwig Studio using the sound from that. And we wouldn't hear that in the near zero latency in the mixer app. If you can hear a strange effect where it sounds like there are two copies of the recording happening at the same time, I call that ghosting. That is when the real-time monitoring through the ID mixer and the monitoring through Bitwig Studio are both engaged. So the fix here is to turn off either the monitoring in Bitwig Studio or turn off the monitoring in the ID mixer. I hope this is enough to get you started with Bitwig Studio. Thanks for watching and good luck. If you need any more help, we have lots more resources on our website at audient.com. And if you're having trouble, you can always contact our support team. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.